Well, good evening, brethren. It's good to be together. We praise God for these times when we can open God's word. I'm afraid I have to make a correction already. Brother Bob, you said putting on the new man and putting off the old. Well, you have to put off the old first, and then you can put on the new because they can't join together. There's no compatibility. Just a slip of the tongue. Brethren, let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read it again. Ephesians 4.22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, brethren, I think that you should do whatever you want. Now, maybe we should close the door so no one can get out until I explain what I meant. I think you should do whatever you want. Whatever your heart wants. That is what you should do. Where does that desire come from within you that is a hunger that wants to please God? This longing to live a life that would make God rejoice. Where does that come from? This is not the desire of obligation or duty. That, is, that thought is contemptible in view of this desire to please God, to rejoice in God, to know him. Like Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, he counted all things but loss for the excellency of this, mm -hmm. to know Christ Jesus. Where did that come from? A fundamental change took place to create this new man within us. Like a seed in good soil, there is life and growth, but this life must be maintained or it can be choked out. You know it's true. The gospel brings abundant provisions for growing and bearing fruit. And that's the work of the gospel. And the implications of the gospel are God put a new man within you, one that loves righteousness one that loves holiness, one that wants to please God. And that's what you have when you've been converted in Christ Jesus. The old man has desires. The new man has desires. We have competing desires. And putting off the old and putting on the new is really just responding to desires. Whose desires are you responding to? That's what this is about. Well, there are worldly desires. The old man is the fallen nature within us. Did I tell you anything you don't know yet? We wrestle against this, this body of death. Paul cried out, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? When Adam sinned, sin swept across the whole human race and fell upon everyone. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death, death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And this nature of sin and, and uh, a preference for things of this world was born into us. And the scripture says it is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. The old man stays with us after conversion. As Paul said, I find a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So the old man within you has desires. Every man is tempted 
when he is drawn away of his own lust. These things within us, these are desires that are stimulated by earthly signals. See, the flesh savors not the things that be of God. See, there's a savor word. Desires, things that the flesh likes. They are contrary to God. And of course, they're corrupt. The carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. And that is our situation in, without Christ. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Please hear that message tonight. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. So what do we do? How do we overcome when we have within us something that desires to sin? Something that desires contrary to what God desires? Well, God knew that what we needed was a heart change, a heart transplant. He said, oh, that there were a heart in them. And this is the problem, was our heart. And so God has given us a new man. The way that we overcome is to want to overcome. Desire is an amazing thing. It can make people do amazing things. If you want to, so there are worldly desires, and praise God, there are other worldly desires. Just as that old man is invigorated and stimulated by earthly signals, your new man is stimulated and stirred up and has desires after God and after heavenly things. I wonder if you recognize it. When God stirs your new man, he loves what is right. Amen. Created after God in righteousness and true holiness. When people of the world get to know a true believer, there are two things that must make them wonder. One is, they marvel that believers deny themselves the fulfilling of fleshly lusts. Why do they do that? Why, or why don't they fulfill the lust of the flesh? That which to them has perhaps become the only purpose in life. There are those who spend most of their time either running to fulfill or trying to justify the fulfilling of the desires of the flesh. What is it about a believer? I mean, when they see a true believer, they don't do those things. What is it? Why don't they? Why do they deny themselves pleasure? Another thing well, 1 Peter 4 4 says, where, and they think it's strange. They think it's strange that you do not run with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Some falsely and foolishly charge, God made me with these desires, so it must be all right to satisfy them. But God did not make us with fleshly lusts. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of the life is not of the Father. It is of the world. <clears throat> the other thing that the world must marvel about believers is that, the, is that believers do things that to them would be a great burden or sacrifice. So they don't give in to fleshly desires, and they do strange things like they go to meetings for three days straight. All day. You mean you're going to church for three days straight? Well, you know, I like church so much, I take it with me wherever I go. Amen. I am the body of Christ. Amen. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. The church of the living God. They think it's strange that we are not like them, but they don't realize that God has made us new with new appetites and desires. That's what he's done in us. He's given us new hunger and new desires. And this is the way we can say no to ungodliness and worldly lust 
is because we don't want to 